Hello guys and welcome back to Commander the Great War with our Entente playthrough. In the last episode, we've done most of our turn. Serbia is still holding the line, barely. We've moved our French fleet into position over here by the Ottoman Empire. We've had pretty big naval battles and chased the Germans out of the whatever sea this is. We also had some more big battles over here by Russia, but the remaining German Navy kind of overwhelmed the Russians and we retreated them back into port to get some repairs going. We figured out only submarines could get into this portion of water from outside. So a British submarine has come through and we're getting some more British submarines ready. Well, we kind of blockade the area and stop the Germans from being able to use their Navy. Most of the German Navy is wiped out. The Western Front, we finished encircling Metz and killing every other unit here except for the one that's in Metz. And we also temporarily cut off the entire Schlieffen plan's advance from its homeland, although this will change very rapidly as we get units into position. The Canadian Expeditionary Force is about to arrive. Now we have to deal with Russia. First and foremost, I've repaired some units already. Any units you see that cannot move currently are because I repaired them, except for this train. This armored train finished building this turn. So this is my third armored train. And now I have the exact amount I wanted. We're done producing armored trains. Everything's looking pretty nice. This one down here was deployed last turn. I'm going to move this up into position immediately on the rails and right up next to some Austrians. But I can't get a preview on attacking. I guess it's because they're not on the railway, so I can't get a preview on what it would be like to attack them. I think everyone else I have attacked with an armored train has been on the railway. I had to repair this infantry, so we can't really get him where he'd be best at, but I didn't want to leave this army not repairing because it's an entire infantry army. The trenches here have been widely abandoned by a lot of the Austrian and German troops that were up here for some reason. There's a German army and two Austrian armies, but all the garrisons seem to have left. So we're going to try to do some moves here. Let's go ahead and take our army here, our Russian army, and move it forward into their trenches along the edge here. I'm going to replace it with this garrison and replace that garrison with this one. Now that the train is here, I have more room to shuffle things around. Hopefully I'll be able to move the train up next turn and push forward even more. We found one of their small garrisons they ran away with. And we can get a good attack in right now by the looks of it. Better than attacking this. The um, whoops, the odds of attacking it are pretty not good. Offenses on this front aren't looking great currently. So let's attack what we can. We actually lost one there, but we killed about six. Better than nothing, we'll have to run away certainly even more. As long as we keep on the pressure, that seems to have been my most successful tactic so far. Just overwhelm them with numbers. Moving up north, we have routed the supply of the forces around Danzig. At Koningsberg, not so good. The Germans here are still supplied somehow, unfortunately, which would make them harder to uproot. But Koningsberg is currently seeming like it's running out of supply. So to start, I'm going to move this army that has a commander forward into the plains, ordering these forces and seeing what we can do to them. Funny enough, it looks like we have better odds against the already damaged infantry, and that's an entire German infantry that we have now made vulnerable with our repeated attacks. I could weaken him even further, and I think I'm going to try, because I think progress down here matters more since they're out of supply than Koningsberg itself, especially since our most valuable troops are down here by Danzig. Let's go ahead and strafe this infantry. We dealt one damage. I don't know if it damaged the efficiency at all, but we dealt one damage, so that's pretty good. We're going to move this infantry up as well, and he has a pretty good attack rate as well right now, so we're going to go ahead and attack with him first, since he's already partially damaged. We lost one, we dealt three, about what we were expecting here, their efficiency went down a little bit more, pretty good. Our own efficiency needs some resting as well on a lot of these troops. I'm going to take the unit that has a commander, I think, yeah, and we're going to attack this infantry as well. And we actually completely fucking wiped them out. We did lose two of our own units, which is unfortunate. No efficiency loss. We're going to move up into the trenches that we have just claimed. And now we are down to just some cavalry and an infantry for Danzig. I'm going to go ahead and cycle some forces around. The cavalry over here are going to move and seal off this little hole for now. They have pretty good attack rates there. 
which is good even after moving. This garrison is going to move forward and take the position that that cavalry was just holding and help maintain the line. Now, you know, I'd love to do this with more too. I just can't get my garrisons over there in one simple movement. I do want to do some damage to this cavalry as well since it is kind of weakened. And I think I'm gonna, I'm just trying to figure out with who. Let's start with the commander here that is commanding an infantry, Udenik attack. We lost two, we dealt two. Worse losses than we were expecting, unfortunately. But now my cavalry has more attack value and a better ratio. Let's see if we can pull something off here. We lost one, we dealt four. Better odds than we were expecting this time around. That's good. And now even our garrison has a pretty good attack rate. So let's go ahead and attack with this garrison. We dealt two, we lost none. Alright, not so bad. Udenik taking the brunt of the blow. Not that I fear any out of supply infantry or an out of supply nearly dead cavalry or a losing efficiency infantry at Konigsberg can really do a lot to cause an issue with Udenik. Maybe do some damage with this infantry but probably not a whole lot overall. We could do some attacks over here with these cavalry but I don't want to weaken them since they're the ones holding the front. I think we're making some good progress right now. That is about all we really can do slash should do on our front. Let's not forget that the Ottomans are in the war now, so we have them to worry about as well. We are producing stuff with Russia still. I ordered this stuff. More infantry into production, more ammo production. But that is our entire turn. Let's go ahead and hit end turn and see how this plays out. See what losses we incur from their attacks. I expect they are going to reclaim this little part of the Schlieffen plan pretty quickly. Oh, they're actually going to surround the armored car. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, they went and wiped out the armored car. That's unfortunate, but it was only a Belgian unit. Not too big of a deal. And it seems to have stopped them from using those units to reclaim their supply line back home. They're moving a lot of units off the Austrian front, cycling some weaker garrisons onto it. They're taking away... Oh, they're taking away a lot of their strong units from this front. A lot. They placed a new commander over on the Russian front with Austria. The Ottomans are moving forward towards Sari Kamish. Okay, that's uh, that's some big news actually. They're doing major recycling of troops. Oh, they did attack with Koningsberg forces, but they attacked a garrison. They cycled off of Danzig. Wow, that was stupid of them. They basically just gave up Danzig by cycling the um, the cavalry there. That's silly of them. All of our convoys are moving. A new convoy is spawning. We have a lot of convoys on the way. And Serbia has developed barbed wire. I still don't know how to use that. I've also now gotten a Russian general. Some sort of defensive... Oh yeah, that's a very defensive general. Well, we could use a general down here on this southern front, that's for sure. Um, I guess I'll give him to one of the infantry down here. I could also put him down by the Ottomans, but... Oh, you know, that actually could be pretty useful now that I think about it. For holding the front line. Ugh, but he'd be probably far more useful up on the western front. That's hard to say. I am making more infantry that I intended to use down south as well. Huh. I think I'm going to place him down. I can always move him later. I'm going to place him down here by Sarah Kamish. Because I believe that that will help hold the line a little bit better. This turn we have a lot of things that we need to deploy. Including a Serbian army. Now this is actually a rather big deal and I'd love to get it up here to like, you know, the front front. In order to bolster Serbia's numbers a little bit, I'm going to disband this very shaken, very fucked up garrison right here. Get a little bit of manpower back, get a little bit of production back. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to deploy this Serbian army here. It will be moved up likely to here, freeing up this garrison for, you know, other duties as well, so it'll be fine at the end of the day. They did not go on the attack in the west for once. In fact, they just retreated every valuable fucking unit they had down here out and just manned it entirely with garrisons and some cavalry. That's a pretty big deal. Um, as for this garrison, I'm gonna move it, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna move it back to Kralhevo where I can stand guard. I'm gonna get it repairing. Pretty cheap to repair it, especially with what we got back from that other garrison. So we have a nice little 
deal happening here. We can fire our artillery, so I'm going to fire it at the only German garrison up here on the front still. This seems to be a pretty big place for us to end up attacking. I'm going to, of course, utilize this unit again and go on the offensive here. Ooh, that did not go actually very well. We lost two and only dealt one. Quite the opposite of what we were told we were going to do. I will stay on the offensive though. We are going to attack this German now with another army. We dealt one, we lost zero. That's always optimal, that's for sure. And now we are going to also attack with the unit on Belgrade, cross our fingers. Uh, we dealt zero, but we lost zero. I guess it could have been worse. We also, over here by Sarajevo, have a good chance to go on the offensive with this infantry. My only concern is that this infantry is not in a corner like this one. It can be attacked by three separate garrisons. But let's see what happens if we do go, go on the offensive over here. We lose two, we kill two. We'll have to see how that plays out. I want to make them struggle to hold this, and I don't want them to just leave garrisons here and think that that's all it takes to hold me back and move all their armies away. Their garrisons can't hurt my armies very much, but next turn will definitely be a repair and sit the fuck down turn for uh, Serbia, that's for sure. Two British infantry are ready, and these infantry were produced specifically for Egypt, so we're going to deploy them both specifically in Egypt, so we have a nice frontal defensive force here if they decide to come for us. Not that defending dunes is likely very efficient. Extreme Heath make this terrain very unsuitable for waging modern warfare. Yeah, it's understandable. I'll probably push up closer to their front, get an idea of what's going on up there with my units over here. Looking at the Mediterranean, I'm going to take this submarine and I'm going to move it, let's say, over here. I'm gonna keep this blockade here and I'm gonna use the submarine just to keep an eye on over here. Maybe intercept anyone that's trying to go through. The other submarines are good where they are. We have the entire Mediterranean basically completely boxed in at this point. This Canadian expeditionary force has arrived and we are going to land them right here next to Calais. They've lost some efficiency from the transport, unfortunately. We are going to deploy this Russian infantry where I intended to deploy it, which is down south on the what would you call this, the Ottoman front here. I'm gonna deploy it pretty close to the front, right here, so we can start making some entrenchments in the mountains too, to block off Tiflis, which is basically where they're going to have to pass through in order to get down or up anywhere else. There's a garrison already entrenched here. I trust it to hold this line. It's a weird place to try to attack from anyway, and they block it off pretty well. These two infantry, I think should be enough, but I have one more Russian infantry being produced just in case I need it down here. But I have two turns to figure out if I do need it down here. Hopefully I don't and I can just send it up to the front because the less stuff tied down by the Ottomans the better while I'm playing defensively. I'm sending infantry rather than cores down here though just because they will last longer, they'll survive longer, and they're just worth more. Which makes it sound like they'd be better up on this front. But I'm just trying to make the best use of my resources here, and if I can hold this with just a couple of infantry, I can also deal good damage while holding it. They don't stand a chance of getting past. It also fucks with the enemy AI. The enemy AI treats garrisons much differently, which is why I'm sending infantry here, because even though I trust this garrison to hold this, I don't entirely trust him to survive should the Ottomans turn their full force over there. And... Sure, they can go north, but if they do, I can meet them pretty easily using armored trains or redeployment. Whereas, they're more likely to try to conquer all of this stuff here, I feel like. And infantry would just be much better at holding that. Far harder to break, and the enemies would be far less inclined to try to push through them. Over by Danzig, I've noticed that they've all gotten their supply back, and that's really unfortunate. However... We can easily take Danzig right now. This cavalry is fucked. It has lowered efficiency, and overall, it's just strength is minimal. They've doubled the strength of it from two to four, but it's not enough. We're going to attack with one of the cavalry on the front because this is its time to shine. And just like that, we've wiped out the defenses at Danzig. I'm not too worried about them flanking me over by Danzig, and a lot of my units over here could use some kind of a rest. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna actually move the cavalry forward into Danzig to hold it since their efficiency is so good. We have now actually taken the port from this, this is a light cruiser I believe, yeah a level 3 light cruiser that has lowered its efficiency by half 
from 10 to 5. Wow, if we could do that for this, what is this, pre-dreadnought? That could be pretty damaging. I'm going to cycle some of these armies to where they're more needed. This garrison is pretty fresh, so I'm going to move it forward to try to get it into a more defensive location. This army is going to move into the trenches that it was holding as we prepare to besiege Koningsberg and this last remaining infantry up here. We're going to take the artillery and we are naturally going to fire on Koingsberg because it's probably the most useful thing we can do with it right now. They got all their efficiency back somehow like really quickly which is unfortunate. But now without Danzig like this infantry is going to starve. I'm not too worried about harming it. Instead I'm worried about Koingsberg where they are constantly reforming themselves. We're going to take this plane and we're also going to strafe Koingsberg. It looks like we dealt some damage even if it said we didn't and we lowered more of their efficiency. That opens up sooner an attack. However, we are not yet ready to attack it. We will just get slaughtered should we try. Again, this guy's going to open himself up to be destroyed all by himself. So ideally, all I need to do up here is focus on repairing my units and letting them rest and get ready for the big assault. This army... Can this army attack this? No. This army... This core, this cav, this army, this army. Some of them don't need a rest, some of them do. We're just having them wait right now for the enemies to starve themselves out. We're waiting for when we can fire more artillery, strafe, do more damage to Koningsberg. It's generally going to be the plan up here. Down south on the Austrian front, we have a interesting little scenario here. I'm not quite sure how to handle it, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some more shuffling. I'm going to take this garrison, which is looking pretty healthy. I'm going to move it forward into their entrenchments here. Take a peek around. It is just a garrison, but it is in entrenchments, and I'm keeping it in entrenchments, and we can see what they have here. They've been slowly getting pushed back by the looks of it. They're all the way back to Presmill again with this small garrison. They don't have enough forces on the front, which is probably why they're taking armies away from the Serbian front, because they don't seem to think that they can actually hold here, which I guess is only a good thing. I'm not too worried about them pushing up here and cutting anyone off because I have at least some rear route protected and they don't have enough troops to push up. So I'm instead going to take this infantry, I'm going to push it down south and cut off their rail access this way. They still have it here, but we can work on that. I can also get units in a good position to attack Presmill. This dude, however, does need his flank protected. So we're going to move this garrison down south with him. I'm also going to take this garrison and move it over there to protect the final part of the flank. This army is going to be routed down this way so that he can protect the rear of this unit. And then the armored train is going to push up next to Lemberg where it can actually, you know, do something when it's time to do something. Let's take a look at the British Navy. We finished two submarines and they need to get moving up into position. But before I do that, I want to do a little more reorganization since we have some extra ships up here now. I want to protect further down south with this fleet overall, so we're going to move these dreadnoughts. Hmm. Maybe not like that, because we want to focus it around the commander. We're going to move these dreadnoughts down south. So we're going to put the other dreadnought somewhere kind of behind it, like right here. And I want to make it look more like this. It has an armored cruiser two dreadnoughts, and three light cruisers. We have three light cruisers. We just have some pre-dreadnoughts here, but I want to use the pre-dreadnoughts as kind of their own little fleet. So we're going to take the armored cruiser, and we're going to put it a little bit in front of the dreadnoughts here. And now we have to move some other things. So this light cruiser is going to go in front of you. Probably want to put the third light cruiser right here where this pre-dreadnought is. So let me unveil to you what my plan is by moving this pre-dreadnought up here, light cruiser down here, pre-dreadnought up here. Okay, and we have the armored cruiser, good. I want to make like a little mini fleet in between these two fleets to catch if anything happens of overall less valuable ships. I have another armored cruiser, which I'm going to move up behind the two pre-dreadnoughts. It's actually more valuable than the pre-dreadnought, so we have a good sight over what's happening over here. At least they try to move any ships through. Submarines can still get through, but just submarines. It's not really that problematic. We do have some submarines to move into action as well, and I'm going to send them where they are going to be most useful for us, and that's patrolling this area. So let's move the submarines up. And right now, we can actually also see that they have a light cruiser here, 
and it seems just a light cruiser unless there's a submarine hiding from me in there. Looking at our submarines, I've noticed that the Russian submarines are actually worse than the British ones. We have a pretty interesting situation here though. The Von Arnold commander and his light cruiser, which is actually good against submarines, it's the best thing against submarines really, is two hexes away? I think these ports provide protection two hexes away, right? Ports provide a powerful bonus, while national ports provide a lesser combat bonus to all friendly ships within a radius of two hexes. So he gets a little bit of a bonus, but he's still very weakened. And submarines are going to be my main strength here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually take this opportunity, considering I also have two British submarines incoming as reinforcements to replace these two if they need to retreat. I also have a, my own friendly port now right here. I wonder if I can attack them from within the friendly port. I'm going to test this. So it looks like I can indeed put the Russian sub into my port. And then hopefully, I guess I'm getting the bonuses of it. I think it's mainly like a defensive bonus that you get from it. I'm not sure. But I'm going to keep my units close to these ports. These are not national ports, though. So they do not operate by the rules that I just read. I know that much. But we will attack first with the Russian submarine. We dealt one. We lost one. That's fine. Let's use the British one. Uh, we dealt two. We lost one. We got a pop-up. Silent killer. Recent events have proven submarines can be deadly weapons. Research groups are now interested in developing anti-submarine weapons. Oh. Okay. So this has unlocked all new research for us, I guess. Anti-submarine weapons somewhere. I don't know which this is for. Is this for... Huh. Something just unlocked, and it involved... Oh, here it is. Anti-torpedo? No, maybe not. Death charge, here it is. Anti-submarine attack, plus two. So this research just started since we used submarines and saw that they could be effective. And we did hurt this pretty well, which is nice. All hurting ships really does is cost some manpower if you don't kill it. This ship will likely get away. There's not very much I can do to stop it. But any little manpower we drain from them is good. Because, I mean, I think we have a good manpower advantage anyway. Especially with Russia, especially. But the British, using all their manpower on the ocean and planes right now, are being very efficient with their manpower as a result. I also want to make sure no more German convoys get through now that I know where they come from. So this pre-dreadnought is going to move forward. It's going to move up. Uh, maybe not too far, just in case I want it to get into any kind of fighting. Everything has to pass through here. So I'm going to move the pre-dreadnought up here to keep an eye on things. Move the Dreadnought itself forward just so that it can jump into battle should it be needed while the armored cruiser is still repairing. The more submarines get, we get over here, the better. I can eventually just block this off with submarines and sink anything that comes through. And now for the Western Front. Mets must fall and it's time to start attacking. We're going to start with our artillery. It can cost 9 ammo, I guess because it's injured. I think I questioned that last time I recorded. We're going to attack. We do no damage, but we hurt their efficiency. They have planes here, so the fighter strafes are going to be risky business currently. I really want to see Mets fall as soon as possible, so I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, they didn't have any fighters intercept, and we lowered their efficiency even more. They're now down to 8 efficiency, they're low on supplies, and they're surrounded. Yet their capabilities, as you can see, are still very impressive. I'm going to move this infantry forward to add to the whole surrounding factor here and we are going to start attacking because I want to get rid of this as soon as possible and France's manpower is pretty strong like twice as good as the UK's which has already dipped down a, a decent bit. In the beginning of the war we're already going through so many things but I'm sure as winter sets in and trench warfare kicks in we'll see the casualties probably slow down on all sides. Let's start with our infantry that are here. Let's go and attack Metz. We dealt nothing, we lost nothing. Let's attack with the ones at Strasbourg. We dealt one, we lost nothing. We also dealt some efficiency damage, which is pretty good. Which opens us up to more potential attacks. Some of my infantry that are capable of attacking are unfortunately weakened right now. I'm going to try to use everything I have here. His buff extends two hexes, so I'm going to move Joffrey actually out of the fray for a turn here 
And he still provides pretty good buffs all round. Maybe not to this unit. So we're going to move this infantry forward into where Joffrey was so he can attack. And now let's go ahead and do that. We'll attack first with this infantry. We lost one. We dealt one. And now with the one we moved up, we lost one, we dealt one. These are fair trades to me, especially considering our infantry is inferior in every single way. Now we're going to do the riskier thing and attack with Nivelle, one of our generals. Lost none, dealt one. We are weakening them very clearly. Uh, this infantry is right next to some German infantry. I don't know if I want to attack with him, especially because he's only at eight strength. We also have two French corps we can deploy. And... I'm probably going to play it safe here, and I'm going to deploy them up here on the Belgian front. And I'm going to use them to hold slash push a front, I think. I think that's what I'm going to try to do with them. So we're going to deploy both of them up here, and I'm going to end up pushing them forward up to here to try to encircle the Germans with raw numbers. That's, that's kind of an idea I have right now. Before I commit to that kind of push, I'm going to test them a little bit. But moving the BEF just next to Brussels and seeing if they choose to attack the BEF. I'll take the garrison behind the BEF and move it over into this forest to keep these enemies distracted with some quote-unquote easier enemies to deal with. I'm also going to repair this infantry and repair this cavalry. Let them both rest a turn, get their HP back up. To hold the line, I'm going to move this garrison up into the entrenchments on the railway because I think that's pretty important. And to hold this side of the river here, I'm actually going to take the garrison off of Nancy. And I'm going to push that forward. Nancy's not in a vulnerable position at all right now. And I can easily replace the garrison at Nancy with another garrison. Such as this one that's just been sitting here the whole time. Or this one later on. This dude's not really going to be needed here. There's not enough frontage for him to be useful here. So I'm going to move him now in that direction. Now that Paris is... Pretty damn safe. I doubt they're going to try to just pincer right through here. And if they do, they will be surrounded and killed. So I think this is a pretty efficient way to secure the front and stop this armored train from doing any damage. I just realized the Russian armored trains are actually better than theirs. I have an advantage somewhere. That's pretty nice. I'm going to sit on all of my remaining points for this turn for production. Because we don't have enough to really do a whole lot of things right now. As certain things are getting more expensive and as certain needs are already being met. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the end turn button and we're going to see how this goes. Oh, we can see a German convoy coming up west of Paris. Apparently they're getting some African convoys as well. Uh, something just got attacked over there. I think that was... I, I didn't even get to see what that was. Uh, looks like they are strafing my artillery or bombing them with their airships and planes. There is a mass rout of the Schlieffen plan, actually. They moved a lot of their units away from that front. They're going heavy on assaulting in Serbia right now, but the units they're assaulting are actually units, a unit especially, that I planned on replacing anyway with infantry, so that's pretty convenient for me. And otherwise, some big pushes elsewhere. They moved some air support down by Serbia. They're going on the offensive over here by the Austrian front. That was a very weird use of a railway movement. That just, that hurt them. That lowered their efficiency. That was stupid of them to do. Some of my convoys are reaching their home ports. I wonder where those German convoys came in from, from Africa. Oh, and now we have convoys coming in from there. Belgium and Russia have also developed barbed wire. I still don't know how to use that. We've gotten a Russian admiral to deploy. Not many Russian ships, however. So I guess we will deploy this on the armored cruiser. That seems to make the most sense. They're the most valuable ones. So this is a bug, I guess. There's a German convoy here, but it's not displaying on my screen. You see this, right? That would be very easy to miss. And somehow, since the episode's about to end, I have to keep track of the fact that this is here. I mean, I'll see it moving through this straight. It's not getting past these units here. That's for sure. So I'm probably going to want a submarine for around this area as well, since I know German convoys are coming up it. Uh, yeah, they are mass routing out of Belgium. They have abandoned the fortress of Liege and instead opted to make a front in the channel leading from Belgium into Germany. They pretty much accepted that they've lost a lot of this. If they're still trying to sit on Brussels to hold the capital, but let's be real, by doing that, 
They have sacrificed these two infantry. They're not going to be able to hold that forever. And we have essentially just confirmed, I think, that Belgium is going to be free again. I don't think they have the forces to hold Belgium. They are opting instead for a wide defensive array just outside of Alsace-Lorraine on this other side of this river against us. They're even taking small garrisons out of cities in order to put this up. And what got hit over here? That was the British submarine getting hit because their light cruiser decided to fight the British submarine which it did some damage, yeah, but it's basically just screwed itself over. Okay, cool. I'd say that's a pretty good turn. I don't think they really did everything they needed to do. I think this is going to go pretty well for us. But that's all we have time for today. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.